this offseason and, and the chance to really flank Kyler Murray with a lot of talent, knowing that he's cheap and knowing that it's not necessarily a two year window to contend, because if you have a superstar quarterback, if Kyler Murray gets to that point, you can still win, even if he's expensive. But this is a great chance. And you look at Dak Prescott, like the, the Cowboys were awesome when Dak Prescott was on his rookie deal because he was cheap. And when Russell Wilson was cheap, the Seahawks won a Super Bowl and Patrick Mahomes won a Super Bowl on a rookie deal. And Josh Allen and the bills were great last year. Cause he's on a rookie deal. I mean, the, the examples are over and over and over. So I think the Cardinals feel like they cannot waste this opportunity of these next two seasons. And that's why I think they, they can still be very aggressive in this next week or so. I mean, Dak Prescott, another hundred million, he could afford one of those Jerry Jones super yachts that he got for about two sixty. So, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's <laughs> so with that in mind, I mean, Darren, it, does it behoove the Cardinals to be ultra aggressive? Should they? Will they? I mean, that Dak Prescott is a heck of a reminder of what the Cardinals are going to be on the hook for if Kyler Murray truly is the future of football and their future franchise quarterback, at least long-term franchise quarterback. I mean, maybe it's been reinforced here this offseason. The time is now more than ever. Uh, there's a couple of things that pop into my head with that one. I would say yes. And, and Kyle has been pushing this all along. So props to Kyle about pushing their chips in and being very aggressive. And, and I do think once the Watt signing happened, I think that really kind of tip, tipped off the direction they were going to go. I mean, I don't think after seeing the Dak Prescott numbers, it's not a question to me of, of, if Kyler Murray gets paid that kind of money, it's a question of when. Um, Dak Prescott hasn't won anything in the postseason. Dak Prescott's numbers and what Kyler Murray's doing, unless Kyler Murray falls off a cliff next year, Kyler's going to have performed just like Dak Prescott has. So he's going to have a very fair argument for that money. And that is what it's about in, in the quarterbacks. I, I got into, a, I don't want to say an argument, but uh, again, going back to a mailbag question this week and, and somebody kind of talking about how terrible it was that these quarterbacks take up such giant parts of the salary cap and, and Matt Berry, an ESPN sports center anchor who actually went to Arizona state and grew up in Scottsdale. He tweeted out and got a lot of flack over how ridiculous it was. Dak Prescott was getting that kind of money and, and the whole argument over what quarterbacks are making when they haven't done anything. And, I feel like saying, guys, this is, this is how it works. This is what's going to happen. It's why Jimmy Garoppolo, okay, his contract was made in such a way that the 49ers could get out of it. But guess what? The 49ers still haven't gotten out of it because they have nothing better. And he's a decent quarterback. And Kirk Cousins, we, what do we say when Kirk Cousins signed with Minnesota? It's like, oh, you know, he's, he's doing these short-term deals, but he's not worth it. He is worth it because he's a quarterback that could potentially help you win games. And we've seen up close and personal over the years, guys, quarterbacks that don't win games. And this is not to slight any of these people as human beings, but because I, I like them all very much personally, but John Skelton and Ryan Lindley and Kevin Cobb, even uh, Derek Anderson, Max Hall, this is what you get when you don't want to pay a quarterback who might not be a, the best quarterback in the league. That's what happens when he leaves because he is going to leave if you don't pay him what you want. And you can't even get in a position, and this is where the Cowboys were, of franchising these guys two or three times because that is going to cost you an arm and a leg, and you might as well just extend them. So when it comes to Kyler and his contract, which he can start talking about extending after the season, it's a tough thing if you don't push your chips in right now because he's going to get his money, even if he's not Patrick Mahomes. If he's just Kyler Murray, who, by the way, threw for whatever it was, almost 4,000 yards and ran for 800 yards and ran for 10 touchdowns or whatever it was and made the Pro Bowl, that's a pretty good quarterback. You're going to have to pay him. So, yeah, I would say push in now because he's going to get that money. It's not, it's not if, it's when. No QB, no chance. I think J.J. Watt used that saying in his press conference. It's just, it's known. And if the rest of the, the players know better than anyone. If you go into a season, you go into a game, and you don't have a capable quarterback, forget it. The bottom's going to fall out. Guys won't believe. And it's the easiest way to submarine your season before it even begins. So 
And yeah, we lived it not too long ago in between franchise Pro Bowl caliber quarterbacks. So there's a poignant reminder. And, and Kyle, think about it. Over the first half of last season, Kyler Murray was a legitimate candidate in the MVP race. Do you think the Dak Prescott numbers and big money does anything to him knowing what Darren just said coming off year number three is his initial time to launch into long-term negotiations. Do you think that sort of news and happening here in the off season impacts his 2021 regular season at all? Before, before you answer this, Kyle, because I, I do want to know your answer to this, but I also have to, this is a dual question here because I don't want to get too far off the topic. I want to know how disappointed you are that you didn't get to live through some of those times covering the Cardinals because you got here when Carson Palmer was like just ramping up. So it was, I mean, for a while there, the Cardinals were playing like 850 football percentage wise when you were around or whatever crazy number it was. So, you know, you, you didn't get to see any of that. Did you miss any of that? And then answer the question about Kyler and I money mean, getting his head. Darren, what in the same name of Rich Bartell are you talking about? And are you asking Kyle Odegaard to comment on go Kyle? <laughs> I got a taste of it in 2018. Granted, it wasn't seven years or whatever you guys had in a row between uh, between Kurt and Carson. I had an abbreviated taste of it, which the, the Sam Bradford and Josh Rosen year didn't go so well. Uh, <laughs> I, I think for you know Kyler what? Murray. The, the mental picture of Sam Bradford on the ground in the Bears yeah. game and not getting up with his yeah. face mask buried at the 13-yard line. Just think of that for that whole stretch. Anyway. And, and to be honest, it, it just seemed like seven years for us. It was only three. It was 2010, 2011, 2012. So it was only three seasons. It just felt a lot longer. And this really reinforces the fact that Steve Kime and Michael Bidwill did make that decision to draft Kyler Murray, which I know we've kind of talked about many, many times, but now that they're back and they turned it around pretty quickly. I know 2019, the record wasn't good, but that was probably the smoothest five win team of all time. There was like all good vibes with uh, that 2019 and now the pressure's on. And I think, I think if you're Kyler Murray, it's certainly a reminder of how important this season is. He's the type of personality where he's very confident in himself. He's very cool. Even in like pressure situations, it never feels like he is nervous. There are certainly players and coaches that might be nervous about certain things, but Kyler Murray never gives off that vibe. And I believe it. I don't think he gets rattled by much. So I, I feel like he knows the type of contracts that are out there. He knows what he'll get. If he has another good season, I think if he progresses from the numbers he did in season two in season three, it'll be a no brainer. Like Darren said that he's going to get that type of extension, but it just doesn't rattle him. I mean, we've seen him. He's, he was the number one overall pick. And I remember flying back with him from, from Nashville to Phoenix and talking to his dad and his dad's like, all right, what's next? Now we're ready to take the NFL by storm. And they weren't like excited about being the number one pick. They weren't, worried about what it means with the pressure it's just that family and Kyler himself just have complete and utter, utter, utmost confidence in what he can do so I think he's he's going to be ready and, and he's going to want to perform well but I don't think there's going to be any pressure knowing that yeah he's going to be eligible for that mammoth extension next offseason and look picking Kyler Murray number one in 2019 trading for DeAndre Hopkins in 2020 now signing JJ Watt in 2021 yes the Cardinals are tracking to win the offseason for the third straight year I'll leave it but at the same time going back to what Sam Acho told us in the Big Red Rage not too long ago about a month ago defenses did adjust to Kyler Murray I would be spending a lot of time here in the offseason studying a lot of game film as to what he faced, especially in the second half of the season, and especially against the Belichick disciples that are out there, the defensive schemes that gave the Cardinals offense issues at times. Because, Taryn, we all know this. If it gave you problems once, you're going to see it again until you prove it. And here, and whether it's a virtual offseason or not, you know defensive coordinators, especially within the division, are studying that game film and said, oh, this seemed to be pretty effective against the Cardinals and Kyler Murray. Uh, you know, clearly the Cardinals have a handful of things that when you go into the season, we're all going to be watching closely on both sides of the ball and in the coaching staff, to be honest. But I don't think there's any question that the main thing that's going to be under the spotlight 
is going to be what this offense looks like, how Kyler Murray operates within it, and the kind of adjustments that you're talking about, Paul, and, and how they try and fix some of the issues that they had down the stretch when you talk about being, quote, unquote, figured out and, and where that can go. I, I think that's absolutely going to be the first thing everybody looks at. 